another bond, messenger. Another one, eh? Got to add a wing for these guys. This one's already got wings. Hello, boy. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Inspector. How the devil did you get in that ambulance? Oh, we just happened to be around when the fireworks started, and we thought we'd ride downtown with you. Get out out of there! Has it ever occurred to you that most of our guests in there are people who just happened to be around when the fireworks started? No. Make a note of that, Snapper. Oh, yes. Did you take any pictures? Who, me? Yes, you! Well, I might have taken a couple. Oh, Snapper's old-fashioned. He doesn't go in for that candid camera stuff, but give him a subject that holds still. Oh, he can't resist it. Give me that. All right, Barney. You're a funny guy. But one of these days, you're going to overstep. And I'm going to have the satisfaction of putting you behind bars. That's well. We'll run an extra on it. After reading Frank Buck's book, Inspector Collins brings one back alive. <laughs> Gee, he's dumb. Well, don't kid yourself. He's smart enough. He just hasn't got my sense of humor. <laughs> he hasn't got my plates either. <laughs> Hiya, Kitty. I'm not here. Well, where are you? Because the boss is looking for you. California. I know that's not far enough. I've gone to Europe. Oh, and what a trip we're having. The boat is going up and down. The waves are going up and down. And I'm beginning to... <laughs> What's the situation over there? Oh, hiya, Chief. Uh, looks bad. Very bad. Copy. Still set on taking that vacation? Oh, you promised me one. I only stopped in for a ream of paper. Going to write a play. Well, that's swell. Take two reams. I'm not stingy. Well, oh, thanks. By the way, they got another bond messenger this morning. You don't say. Little short fellow, blonde hair, about 35 years old, name of Perkins. How'd you know? We were dumb enough to start a vacation by having breakfast on Wall Street. You mean you were there? You covered it? It is the dope. Somebody else can write it up, and Snapper's got a couple of pictures. Taken right in the ambulance. Ambulance? Yeah. <laughs> and was the inspector sore? Who, Colin? <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> See that those are put in the soup right away. Right. Well, I'm certainly going to miss you, boy, in the next two weeks. Four weeks, Mac. Four. Did I promise you four? You sure did. Okay, okay. Do you realize this is the fifth messenger in eight weeks? I've stopped counting them. Another 200,000 bucks worth of bonds gone. Boy, this would be the story of the year if we could beat the cops to the mob that's pulling them. Why don't you put Thompson on it? See, that's an idea. Thompson's one of the best men I have. Well, you better be good to him then. You might lose him. See him in four weeks. Say, listen, Barney, I never saw a reporter yet that could write a play. Well, you're looking at one right now. So long, Chief. Save me a couple of seats for the closing night. I'll do better than that. I'll save you a couple for opening night. That's the same thing. <laughs> you ain't kidding. And neither am I. <laughs> you know, you sleep better if you go to bed. Here's some fresh coffee I just made. Thanks, Snapper. Say, you're doing all right. You finally got the curtain up, huh? You want to know what I think? No. Good, then I'll tell you. You know, a guy that's used to working where there's a lot of noise can't work here is too quiet. Hey, maybe I'm wrong. You want to buy some pineapples, mister? I don't like pineapples. But they're only 25 cents a piece. I still... Hey, wait a minute. There's somebody at the back door. No, I don't want any pineapples. But they're only two for a quarter. Two for a quarter? Well, that is a bargain. Here you are, Sonny. Thanks, mister. You're welcome. Look, I just bought two for a quarter from a kid at the back door. <laughs> That's my little brother. That's the way we work it. Thanks, mister. Didn't want any pineapples in the first place. How do you like your pineapple? Stop. Huh. Do you mind if I answer the phone first? Ooh. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. McFarland. Barney? Sure. Did you tell him where we were? Well, I thought it'd be a good idea to let him know where to send our checks. I won't talk to him, and I'm not interested in anything he has to say. He says, Barney's taking a swim, Mr. McFarlane. Anything I could tell him? 
Steve Martin, the insurance dick? What about Steve Martin? Dead. Shot. McFarland says that he was working on those bond robberies. I'll talk to him. Mac, this is Barney speaking. Yeah, it was a short swim. Where was Martin shot? No, no, no. Where? On the street in Central Park in his apartment? Okay. Come on. Are we going to town? Yeah. Hi, ho, Silver! Uh, that's that's Hi, boys. Hello, Bonnie. Hi, The big brain inside? Yeah. He's all over the place like a horsefly. Barring the press as usual, huh? Uh, just try crashing that door. I think I will. That's as far as you'll get. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do the thinking around here. You can't come in here, Callahan. Well, where have you been? We almost postponed the investigation till you could get here. That was thoughtful of you, Jeff. But since we didn't wait, you can go now. Well, I'm not here for a story. Martin was a pal of mine. Oh, that's too bad. Can you give me any dope on what happened? You can read about it in the evening papers. Or stick around outside. I'll be giving the boys a statement in a few minutes. All right. Sorry I bothered you. Don't mention it. Glad to see you any time. What did you pick up? My pencil. I didn't know reporters carried them, but then I never met a real one. You're hitting on all six this morning. Murder seems to agree with you. Who said it was murder? Isn't it? Suicide. How do you know? Well, the coroner said he was dead and he didn't move after I got here. He had a bullet in his head, his shoulder holster was empty, the gun was in his hand, and one shot had been fired. But of course, if you don't agree with me, I'll order an autopsy and see if somebody didn't poison him. Ah, oh, no offense, Jeff, but I was on the level when I said Martin was a friend of mine, and I can't figure him committing suicide. Then you're not as smart as you think you are, and I'll give you a tip. It won't increase your rating in this town if you go around advertising the fact that Martin was your pal. Do you mind explaining that? Call up the insurance company you worked for and find out why they fired him last night. What, did they? Yeah. There have been five bond robberies that couldn't have been pulled without a leak from the inside. They didn't have enough on Martin to arrest him, but I guess he didn't know that. Come on, boys. What's the dope? Oh, oh, yeah. We've been waiting on here for a long time. Now we want to know. Is that the thing you picked up a minute ago? Yeah. What is it? Shake. <laughs> oh, it's a gag. Huh? Very funny. I don't think so. All right, I don't either. I was just trying to be polite. Did Martin go in for practical jokes? No. And he didn't smoke cigarettes. And I don't believe he was crooked. Then you don't think it was suicide? Bright boy. Well, if it wasn't suicide, then he was murdered. Better and better. Oh. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, I've been to murders and murders, but the idea of a guy coming in to bump another guy off and playing a practical joke on him before he did it... <laughs> gives me the shivers. I don't like it. I don't like it either. Say, listen, Snapper. Phone the office and give them enough for the noon edition. But tell them it's murder. You going crazy? Every other sheet in town will call it suicide. So we'll be different. You mean we'll be canned? Then I'll go back and finish my play. <laughs> I hate to keep reminding you, but you mean start your play. All right, call in the story now, but don't tell him about the buzzer nor the cigarette stub. Where are you going? See a guy I know. He likes to pull gags. Girls, when you hit that right turn, you got it? Okay. Yes. Okay, let's go. Markham? Okay, okay. Hey, Nora, watch Gus at the piano. What's the matter, Eddie? Where are you going? To get measured for a straitjacket. Eddie, 
Oh, I'll let him go, honey. He always comes back. <laughs> Hello. What's the matter with Eddie? Ah, uh, the boss just tried to blow up the piano and Eddie didn't like it. I don't blame him. Marco's still up to his tricks, huh? Mr. Callahan, he's making daisies out of all of us. Why do you know I don't smoke anymore for fear the cigar will explode in my face? I don't drink anymore for fear it's a Mickey Finn. I don't even sit down anymore. Because if the chair ain't wired with electricity, it's the kind of collapses. Ah, oh, he's a great guy. Sure, if you don't mind being on the wrong end of a joke all the time. Can I fix you a drink? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it ain't the old news hound. Hello, Marco. How's tricks? How's tricks? <laughs> That's a good one. You get it, Happy? Yeah, I get it. I get it. Well, Nora. Oh, say, I want you to hear Nora's new song. Go on up there, baby, and give it to him. I'm plenty of... <clears throat> you know, come on, sit down, Barney. Would you take a look at that? Use the other piano. I hope it's safe. Hey, what are you doing up so early? I came to see a girl about a little romance I'm having. Hey, Judy. Yes, Mr. Marco? Come here, honey. Vamp till Marco pipes down. Are you going around with this worthless reporter? Is he worthless? Is he worthless? Why, he's... Why, <laughs> you can just ask anybody in this town, anybody. Yeah, ask the man on the street. Come on, sit down. Yeah, sit down. Nora's gonna sing. Don't look now, cause he's coming this way. Say, lend me your rouge and powder and puff and paint. Don't look now till I tell you okay. Hey, hold me up, I think I'm going to faint. Sister, ain't he good looking? Isn't he the handsome Romeo? Hasn't he that certain... Have a cigar, Bonnie. Thanks. Ain't he good looking? Isn't Aren't he you the smoking? Thing on oh, Red, bring in a couple of cigars. Any special brand? The best we got. Marco, how in the name of heaven can we put on a floor show? Can't you be still for a minute? Okay, honey, I'm sorry. You go right ahead. That's a hot number. You just listen to this, Barney. He's the grandest thing on earth. Hasn't he a million dollars worth of surprise? Take a good look, good look. Oh, no, thanks, Red. I, I think it's a little early for a drink. Take a look, good look, good This is my brand. I'll give this one to my boss. Oh, yes, yes, sure, sure. That's an idea. Isn't he a dream, the image of someone that you hope someday to love? I thought you were on a vacation. I am. Where are you going to spend it? Right here. You can't write your play here. Ah, but I get a swell inspiration for it. Have dinner with me tonight and I'll tell you all about it. Not tonight. Why not? You got a date? No. You don't believe me when I say I'm not interested in any man, do you? Sure I do. That's what I like about you. It isn't just any man. Here, here, here. What's going on? Oh, I, I was just admiring her bracelet. Uh, Mr. Marco gave it to me for good luck. Oh, boy, that was great. That was great, wasn't it, Barney? All right, you girls can go to lunch now. I'll be back at 1.30. You too, kid. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Barney. Goodbye, Judy. And remember, you're my girl. And if any fast-talking wiseacre starts hanging around, let me know. Did you hear that bunny push? <laughs> he works fast, don't he? She's his girl now. <laughs> what does he think of you giving his girl a bracelet? Shh, that's a gag. She thinks it's platinum. So do I. Nora. Okay, okay. I can't even have any fun in my own joint. Let's go to lunch. You want to come with us, Bonnie? No, thanks. I've got to get back to the office. Oh, by the way, Steve Martin committed suicide this morning. Steve Martin? You're kidding. No. Why, he was in here only a couple of nights ago. Maybe he didn't like our show. That's possible. Anyway, he's dead. And I always figured him for a smart guy. Well, that's too bad. But if you don't die today, maybe you die next week. What's the difference? Seven days. <laughs> Seven days? <laughs> You're a card, Barney. <laughs> he's a regular card. Hey, Marco, look at this. Steve Mark. Yeah, I know. Barney was just telling us about it. Got a good horse for me today, Marco? I thought 
you said it was suicide. Inspector Collins said it was suicide. What makes you think it wasn't? Oh, just a hunch. What about Valiant's son on the fifth? Good horse. Well, I guess I can afford a couple of bucks on his nose. So long, Marco. You'll be seeing a lot of me around here from now on. Got to keep my eye on my girl. <laughs> you low down double crossing news on. You put one over on me. Here, let me see that thing. Oh, the oldest gag in the world, and I fall for it. Okay, fella, I'll be laying for you. I'm going to pull a good one on you one of these days. Well, it better be good, Marco, because I'll be looking for it. It'll be good, all right. So long, Barney. So long. But I telegraphed him to suicide. Where's Barney now? Collins is sure hot. Hey, Kitty. Huh? Is Homicide Hank honoring us with a visit? And how? If you're smart, you'll really go to Europe. Pete's writing your obituary. It's real sad. Say, I appreciate that. Okay, but make it snappy. It's all I've got for the four o'clock edition. I'll take care of it right away. <laughs> <laughs> I want a retraction on this murder story and an apology. And I don't want it hidden on the bank page. Now, what I want Come is... Come Barney. Hello, Jeff. You look out of place among the living. Oh, cut the comedy. What's the idea of you giving out that phony murder story? Because I think it was murder. Oh, you think. You think. Now, wait a minute. This isn't getting us any place. Let's talk it over calmly. Now, no one's doubting your integrity. We're simply saying we think you've made a mistake. I've made a mistake? Why, the coroner's... All right. He could be wrong, too, for once. So could we. If we were, it'll be proven at the inquest. There isn't going to be any inquest. The coroner made a thorough examination and officially called it suicide. The police are satisfied and the case is closed. We're not going to waste the taxpayers' money on an inquest for the jury to help you sell a few more copies of your blackmailing sheet. Those are harsh words, Professor. And there's nothing more to be said. Oh, yes, there is. You'll print a retraction. No, I'm afraid not. We're starting a campaign demanding an inquest. That'll furnish copy for four or five days, won't it, Barney? Six days if I write it. Then get started. Have a cigar, Jeff. Wait a minute. All right. You'll get your inquest. But it'll make your paper the laughing stock of New York. Thanks, Jeff. Our comic section always has been a bit weak. No. Uh... Well, hold it a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Holding all cars! Holding all cars! Holding all cars! The inspector's had a blowout! <laughs> Pick him up the blue alley! <laughs> the date's <laughs> off. Oh, boy, is he mad. <laughs> well, spill it. What have you got? Huh? Here's exhibit A. <laughs> you know, Martin was a serious kind of guy. He hated gags, yet I found that on the floor in his apartment. Exhibit B, he was strictly a cigar smoker. And yet I found this, Exhibit C, in an ashtray. Is that all? Well, isn't that enough? It proves that somebody was there with him. And saliva tests on the end of the cigarette will show that Martin's visitor had rabies. And in a fit of madness, shot him through the head. Well, it is. Of course, this little toy is tough to explain. Unless Martin had some friend who has a kid and they came to call and brought this buzzer along to keep the kid amused. Get out of my office. Okay, okay. But I still think it was murder. It had better be murder. Jeff, if I was you... Don't I'd... call me, Jeff! The trouble with this police department is there's not enough respect for superior officers. What if I have known you for years? When we were in this office, you called me inspector. Okay. I mean, yes, sir. Inspector Collins' office. The commissioner wants to see you right away. I've gone home. I don't feel well. Tell the commissioner the inspector's gone home. Yeah. Something made him sick. Harold, get out of there, will you? Now hold up those letters so I can see them. Yes, sir. Well, not in front of your face. <laughs> like this? <laughs> yeah, only steady. 
<laughs> now open up those pearly gates. Come on now, give it to me, give it to me, big, 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 touch it. <laughs> he jumps like a chitterbug. Give me that other ball. <laughs> now we'll make one without the letters. Here's one you can give your girlfriend. Yes, sir. All right, now, come on, give me that personality. Does you like that? <laughs> Is that the janitor? Got an exclusive. How much? Ten bucks and a set of these pictures. That's swell. Now, just tell your story in your own way, and this man will take it down. This one? Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, about 45 minutes before Mr. Martin was killed, he hands me three letters to mail. Of course, I don't pay no attention to where there's address until a gentleman from this paper comes asking around. Strike out gentleman. He means Barney. Well, after we got to talking for a while... Go on, go on. Oh, yeah. Well, after we got to talking for a while, he makes me remember that one of those letters goes to an insurance company. But it's not the company that Mr. Martin works for, or did. What kind of writing is that? I'd like to have a picture of the inspector when they brought in the verdict. You've got one. Snapper was laying for him. <laughs> he looked just like he swallowed something bad. Yeah, and I think the taste is going to last a long time. We'll run a double column cut of it to see that it does. See, how'd you get onto that annuity business? You know, that's the luckiest hunch I ever had. Martin was a nut on insurance, but since he didn't have any relatives, he was interested only in providing an income for himself after he was 60 years of age. So he went in for annuities. All right. If you're 45 years old and planning to bump yourself off, you don't sit down and make a payment of $171 on an annuity that's collectible when you're 60, do you? No, well, hardly. At least I wouldn't. Neither would any of the jurors who brought in the verdict. <laughs> that's what did the trick. And how it did it. Son, you find out who got Martin, and I think we'll crack the bond case. Then you get a real vacation and a raise. That's swell, Chief. Thanks. Particularly the raise. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be able to use it because I'm going to get married. You're kidding. No, on the level, and oh, wait, you see her. She's the sweetest little girl you ever saw. Well, congratulations. That's really good news. You're the best reporter I ever had. If you settle down and behave yourself, there's no telling what you can do. Might be in my shoes one of these days. Oh, no, Chief. If you leave this plant, I leave. I wouldn't work for anybody else. Well, that's nice of you, Barney. Makes me feel kind of good. <laughs> well, now that you're in the mood, maybe you'll okay my expense account. Ah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hey, what the devil did you spend $171 on? How is it marked? Miscellaneous. Well, just let it go at that, Chief, and then don't ask any questions. Don't ask any questions? What is the amount of that annuity payment? Barney, did you make the payment on that policy? Where are you going? Wait a minute. Get that janitor in here. If he should talk... He'll say exactly what he said at the inquest. Did he actually mail some letters for Martin? Forty-five minutes before the body was found. But how... Power of suggestion. I kept asking him if one of them was addressed to a certain insurance company, and pretty soon he was ready to swear that it was. So don't muff things now, boss. He really believes it. How did you make that payment? A cashier's check on a branch of the bank where Martin used to do business. They don't know him from Adam, but it'll look good to have the right bank. Barney, if they ever get on to you... Oh, but... that's all right, too. They can't call it fraud because the insurance company's 171 bucks to the good. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be a hundred a week reporter for the rest of my life, honey. Is that what you make now? Oh, well, my boss promised me a raise and I'm going to hold out for a hundred. But even that's temporary, you know. I'm ambitious. I'm going to write plays that'll make history. I hope you do. If I'm not crushed to death against this wall, maybe I'll get to see some of them. <laughs> I got closer because I'm getting ready to propose. Don't, then. Oh, I know exactly what I want to say. It'll only take a minute. Hey, Barney, where you been? I've been looking... Oh, hello, a killer diller. Is that her? That is she. I'm sorry you can't stay longer. Someday I'd like to have you meet her. Yeah, I'd like to. As I was saying... Hey, I got something to tell you. This is important. Well, so is this. The boss wants you to go to City Hall right away. What for? Well, the mayor's going to give the police department a pep talk on those bond robberies. And he's promised us a picture of himself congratulating you on your work in the Martin case. Well, that's different. Why didn't you say so? Yeah, I thought you'd like that. Because the inspector's going to be there and he ain't going to like it. <laughs> you don't know him, do you? <laughs> I'm above petty triumphs like that. Do you want to come along, honey, and see what a big shot I am? I don't need to. You told me. Uh oh And besides, I have to get back to rehearsal. All right, we'll drop you off on the way. Right and hail a cab, Snapper. What's the matter with the subway? 
Oh, you you mean a cab like we always take? Oh, sure. Bring that lump of sugar along, will you? Aren't you going home, kid? No, it's too far uptown. You want us to bring you a sandwich? No, thanks. I'm having a bite later with Brian and Callahan. See you later. Think it's safe to leave her here alone with Marco around? Hmm, that impractical joke. If I didn't need a job, I'd walk right up and gently kick him in the teeth. You'd probably think you were playing and take a bite out of your leg. What did I come in here for? Oh, yeah. There's a guy out here asking for you. Barney? Nope. He says his name is, um, Malcolm. Malcolm? Yeah. I says, Malcolm what? And he says, just say Malcolm. So I says, well, maybe she knows two Malcolms. And he says, not like she knows this one. Well, I got tired playing the game, and I let it go at that. Mel! Judy! <laughs> How are you, Judy? Surprised? Yes, yes. Let me look at you. Oh, thanks, fella. That'll be all. Huh? Oh, yeah. Who's he? Bartender, General Flunky to Marco. Who's Marco? My boss. Is he all right? A nice fellow? I haven't time to tell you about Marco now. Come on in. How did you happen to come to New York? I didn't happen to come. I got lonesome for you and came. Then you aren't mad anymore? Oh, no. I've been a dope, Judy. And now that I've seen New York, I don't blame you for wanting to come here. I'm not going back either. Honest? Have you a job here? No, but I'll get one. And if you ever tire of being an actress, why, I'll be around and you just say the word. Then we'll start buying things on the installment plan. I'm afraid I'm a long way from being an actress. Have you had dinner yet? No, and I'm starved. I'll change my clothes and go with you. I don't have to be back until 8 o'clock. Swell. I'll get out. Oh, oh, wait. Stay here a second. I'll be right back. Red, give me a pencil and piece of paper, will you? Sure. Marco, and none of his gags. Here's another one. He's driving me crazy. <laughs> what are you doing? Moving out on Barney? I never moved in. <laughs> well, he thinks you did. I can't help that. Give him this, will you? And Red, if he hangs around after you give it to him, ask him to pretend he doesn't know me. My boyfriend's jealous, and I'm pretty fond of him. <laughs> I kind of got that idea when he came in. <laughs> Guard this with your life. It's precious. So are you, now that I think of it. Thank you. Don't you want to leave your hat? <laughs> I guess I'm a little overdressed, huh? Okay, Jolly, enjoy the show. Thanks, Marco. Right. Well, well, if it ain't Casanova. Oh, no, this is Casanova. You probably don't recognize him without his hat. <laughs> <laughs> Scotch and soda. What's yours? Nothing. I'm gonna take my girl home. I have to behave myself. Maybe you better read this first. Hiya, Red. Hiya, Snap. <laughs> I guess you're right. Make it two scotch and sodas. Bad news? No, just a temporary setback. Hello, Marco. Happy? Hello, Hello Simmons. Simmons. I'm glad to see you. You haven't been in lately. Well, I have my reputation to consider. Ah, uh -uh, you don't lose nothing but dough in this joint. Barney, you know Simmons. Yeah, we've met. How are you? Okay, thanks. The best mouthpiece in town. If you ever get in a jam, Barney, call on him. I never get in a jam, so he calls on me. Right, Ralph? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> have you ate your dinner? Not yet, no. Well, come on and sit at our table. The first show is about to go on. See you later, Barney. Yeah. Pardon me, sir. Mr. James Sawyer is here with a party and wants to cash a check. James Sawyer? Sure. How much do you want? 500 if you can spare it. I have to get it out of the safe. Did you write it yet? Not yet. Well, take him some blanks and tell Red to bring his check to me in my office. Yes. You go on in and sit down with Happy. I'll join you in a minute. Oh, Mr. Callahan. Could you cash a check for $500? Now, if you can't, it's all right, because I don't want to carry around any small change. <laughs> Say, do you know who James Sawyer is? I don't know anybody with that much money. Sawyer was Steve Martin's boss. You mean the guy that fired him from the insurance company? The guy who said he fired him. Martin, unfortunately, was not in a position to confirm the statement. You interest me. What another drinker? Tell me more. Two more. One Johnstown jolt. One what? That's what he said, a Johnstown jolt. Who said? That gentleman sitting at the table alone. Hey, 
Hey, that's Mookum. The boyfriend in the note, you know. Yeah? You sure he said Johnstown, Joe? Yeah, that's it. Maybe he meant a glass of water. You know, they had a flood there once. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Johnstown Jolt is three parts of Ipecac with a dash of asafeta. To fix one up for the gentleman, will you? Say, did you say his name was Malcolm? Oh, yeah, but she called him Mal. Thanks, Red. What'll I do? Tell him we can't fill the order? No, I'll just make some up some gin and scotch and brandy with a dash of rum. That's a jolt in any town. And give him this for a chaser. Ain't that the same note I gave you? Sure, it's a chain letter. You forgot to put the dime in it. <laughs> <laughs> See, remember those that came out for a dollar? I made a lot of money on it. <laughs> Mr. Sawyer's check. Okay, I'll take it into Marco. <laughs> Come on, girls, hurry up. Hurry up. Hello, honey. Did you get my note? I wasn't trying to pull anything, Bonnie. It was just that Mal and I had a fight about my coming to New York. And I never expected to see him again. Well, I understand. No hard feelings. Honest? Sure. You ought to know me better than that. Oh, Bonnie, gee, you're 12. I'm very fond of you, kid. And I'll always be around if you ever need me. Thanks. <laughs> What's that? A note, sir. For me? Yes, sir. Congratulations, you're getting one of the finest fellas. Oh, I made a mistake. Hotel. I have it. Hello? This is Miss Judy King speaking. I'd like to leave a message from Mr. Malcolm Hunt from Johnstown. Tell him he mustn't leave town without talking to me and to come back to the Marine Cafe immediately. Tell him the whole thing is a mistake and he has to come back. And please see that he gets this message because he's apt to come in there, pack and leave in a hurry. Thank you. What's happened, honey? Your boyfriend run out on you? Only because Bonnie Callahan pulled a dirty trick on us. Huh? That Bonnie's full of tricks. 
I've been trying for days to think of a good gag to pull on him. Frame somebody to shoot him, that would be funny. Huh? Say, we still got those blank cartridges here? I think so. Then I got him. <laughs> oh, boy, at last I thought of one I can pull on him. <laughs> Wait till you hear it. <laughs> it's terrific. <laughs> are you game to help me pull it? I guess so. What are you going to do? Yeah, that's it. Now, look. Barney's a sucker for a murder, and he's crazy about you. Okay? You're going to shoot me. Shoot you? <laughs> oh, with a blank cartridge. But he won't know it. Oh. <laughs> now, look. You go out and drop a hint to Barney that his girlfriend's in here having a little trouble with me, you know? And when Nora finishes a song, turn all the balloons loose and let them start popping. Boss, if you ever pulled a gag that wasn't noisy, I'd drop that. <laughs> well, what about the dough? Oh. Here. <laughs> okay, kid, let's rehearse it. Take off your hat. Let me see now. Mush your hair. That's it. Now we'll mush up the room. We want this thing to look good, huh? But Bonnie, go! <laughs> Remember me? I'm the night clerk. <laughs> Bonnie, can I see you a minute? Sure. <laughs> you know, I don't generally butt into other people's business, but if I was you, I'd pay a friendly call to Marco's office. Why? Because Nora ain't going to stand out there and sing all night, and if she should barge in on them, be safer to have a third party on the scene. What do you mean? Who's them? Marco and your girlfriend. He just kicked me out, but he'll have to go easy with you. Marco's pulling another one of his gags. He wants the balloons to be going. Okay, kid. Let her go. Easy, kid. Bonnie, I... Now keep quiet. What are you going to do? Get you out of here fast. I want you to walk out as if nothing happens. And if we meet anybody, laugh and talk to me. And head for the back door. Have you got it? Yes. Wait a minute. What happened, kid? Why did you do it? I'd rather not tell you. All right. I can guess. Here, have a cigarette. No, thanks. Pull up in front of that cigar store. Yes, sir. And you stay out of sight. I'll only be a minute. Hello, this is Barney. Give me McFarland. Just a moment, please. For you, Mr. McFarland. Yeah? What? Wait a minute. Joe, hold the presses. Rewrite. Yes. Okay, Barney. Joe Marco's been killed. Okay, boy, swell. Now stick around. I can't. Send somebody else up there. I'll explain later. Where are we going? I have a shack out on the Sound. You can hide out there until I find out how tough this is going to be. But change cabs in the story and again in Flushing. That'll put them off the track. Uh, <laughs> I've had enough fun. You can take me back to the cafe now. What do you mean, you've had a, enough... I don't get it. <laughs> you will when you see Marco. And the next time you pull a rotten trick on somebody, just because they might try to get even. You mean this was a, a rib? That you didn't shoot Marco? 
Zucker was enjoying it so much, I thought he'd start laughing before we could get out of his office. Turn around quick. Get me back to a phone. You can't turn in this bridge, buddy. You'll have to wait till we get to the other side. All right, turn when you can. Oh, never mind the phone. Just take us back to the Marine Cafe. <laughs> I've never seen a practical joker yet who could take it when the joke's on him. I can take it all right, honey. It just happens that I phoned the story into my paper. Oh, I didn't say anything about you, just that Mark had been shot. <laughs> well, they play it up big. Can't you call him and stop it? No. Scoop Callahan caught them just as they were going to press. Before I get to a phone, the papers will already be on the street. So will I tomorrow. You don't mean you lose your job over it. Honey, I've already lost it. Oh, Bonnie. If I told your boss how it happened and that it was all my fault, would that help? Oh, forget it. I've lost jobs before. And I had this coming to me for trying to bust things up between you and your boyfriend. Say, can you square that? I think so. I left a message at this hotel to come back to the cafe. I can explain it to him. Then we're even. No hard feelings? No. And I was wrong about you. You can take it. Swell. Then everything's all right. Oh, except the ribbing I'll have to take from Marco. I could tell him that you're onto it all the time, and you went through with it just to get us. Put the story in the papers? <laughs> no, I'll just have to grin and like it. Joe Marco shot. Night traveler shot mystery shooting. Extra, extra, Joe Marco shot. They say who was there or tell you what had happened? Nope, just that they've been troubling to get down there quick. Well, we'll soon know. Get me Barney Callahan. What for? What for? Before the police know what happens, he's got it in the paper. The police are baffled. Of course they're baffled. I don't know what's going on in China either. Jeff, quiet. You're attracting the crowd. Get me Callahan. I want him for questioning. Then just hold everything and you've got him. Hello, Jeff. Aren't you out kind of late? Where have you been? Well, we rushed out to buy a wreath for Marco, but we forgot to ask him what kind of flowers he likes, so we came back. To ask him? Yeah. That's fine. We'll go in together. All right. All right. One side. Let's through here, please. If you stay where you are, the supper room and the bar will remain open to you. But kindly do not try to leave the cafe. Thank you. Hey, Barney, Barney, where have you been? What happened? Somebody bumped Marco. What about Marco? Somebody shot him. Not really. Oh, but definitely. Oh, cut it. This may be serious. Have you seen him? Sure. I even grabbed a couple of pictures before the cops got here. And he's dead? Really dead? Well, you got it at last. He's dead. <gasps> Wait a minute, Judy. Well, why didn't you notify me? Why didn't hey, you, you come Hey, you can't go in there. Thanks, Barney. We'll take care of her. Marty, take her in one of those dressing rooms. I want to talk to her first. Yes, sir. You, wait in there. <sighs> we could play. There's something in this room. What's that, a game? Yeah, you pick out an object in the room and describe it in a roundabout sort of way. Uh, for instance... There's something in this room that once lived in water. It's brown, and it's no good to its owner when it's empty. Lived in water. That's a tough one. A cocker spaniel. No, no. Nor is purses made out of alligator skin. Correct. Absolutely correct. And a purse is no good to its owner when it's empty. Well, I'll be... And Nora's purse seems to be pretty well filled. Marco was killed with a 38. This happens to be a 32. Have you got a permit? Yes. I'll take it. No offense, Nora. I just thought it was kind of funny to carry a bag like that with an evening gown. I'd left it in Marco's desk and picked it up when I came in. Inspector, this guy's been asking to see Judy King. Yeah? Uh, bring him in here. Sit down. What do you want with Judy King? I got a message from her to come back here. What's your name? Malcolm Hunt. Oh, you're the boyfriend. I object! 
If you're smart, you won't try clowning through this one. You're right in the middle of it. Oh, Jeff, it was a rib on me. Yeah, that's what that dancer told me. What proof have you got? Were you here when the shot was fired? I, uh... Now stick to facts! No, I wasn't. Did you go near Marco? Did you touch him or did you see anything that would indicate that he was alive when you left? No, but... Then you've only got the girl's word for it that it was a rib. Inspector, this band was in here when Marco planned it. Oh. You're the man they call Red. Yeah. Girl tells me you gave Marco a box of blanks from the desk there. That's right. Did you actually see Marco put a blank in the gun? I don't remember. This the shell you found on the floor? Yes, sir. This was now blank. No, sir. And only one shot's been fired from the gun. Any fingerprints on the gun? Wiped clean. She said Marco messed up the room and then washed in the door. Little Barney came in sight. While he was doing that, she could have switched bullets and put a real one back in. Won't somebody tell me? That's it. That's what? That chair. It wasn't broken when I was in the room. It ain't broken now. It's a phony. You see? It looks all right till you sit in it. Come on, honey, get to it. Explain it to you. Come on. <laughs> That's still all right, but who sat in it after I left here? I did. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what this is all about, but I want to see Judy King. Oh, yes. About that message you received, when did you get it and where? Well, at my hotel at 10.35. Now, will you I'll please... I'll take it. I'd like for you to come down to headquarters. Headquarters? Do you mean the police station? Oh, what for? Why? Tell Sergeant White to take the girl down. Who? Not Judy. You're not arresting her for this. Yes, and you're lucky I'm not taking you down. Marco's last gag. It's the babe in arms. All right, hold on. Switch this call to rewrite. What call? Is that it? He's been indicted. Straight murder rap? They let her boyfriend go. How is people that stop calling him that? I'm her boyfriend. The police think Marco was. He gave her a bracelet. So what? I'd have given him one if I'd thought of it. Platinum? <laughs> was it platinum? Sure, with diamonds. It cost $475. Here, you ought to read the newspapers. Take a look at that. Where's that shot you took? Here it is. Ain't it a beaut? Look at the detail. That's blood. That's not the position he was in when I saw him. All right, you keep saying that, but how was he lying? I don't know. I can't remember, but I do yeah, know. Yeah, I know. Somebody shot him after you left, but who? Somebody who was wise to the gag and took advantage of it. Red says he told Nora, Happy, and Simmons, so they're on our list. But suppose somebody walked in there right after Judy and I left. Well? Mark would be a cinch to tell him about the gag and how I fell for it, wouldn't he? All right. While he's there laughing and talking, say he reloads his gun. And his visitor sees it's a swell chance to get him and put the blame on Judy. Say, have you got somebody in mind? Or well, we got to take a phone book and start with the A's. You can begin with the S's. S's? Snapper. Not me. Oh, Sawyer. Martin's boss. The bond guy. He was there. Come in. This man says he has something confidential on the Marco case. He wants to talk to you. What's your name? That doesn't make any difference. Are you Callahan? That's me. Well, here's a scoop for you. What is it? A subpoena to appear as a witness for the prosecution. And you let him in. Wait a minute. Where are you going? To get my girl out of jail. Copy, boy. Kitty, get me Nora Parker in Sherman Arms. I'll take it right here. Hello? Who? Oh. What do you want? I want to talk to you. Can I come over? Sorry, I'm just leaving. Look, Barney, you're not fooling me. You're trying to get that girl off. But if you think I'm going to help you, you're crazy. She killed Marco, and I hope she gets the limit. Well, she killed him deliberately. She deserves it. But if she didn't do it, wouldn't you like to get the guy who did? Are you just talking, or do you know something? Hello, Nora. Here we 
come in? I was just going out to get a bite to eat. Fine, we'll go with you. We'd like to have a little talk with you first in Marco's office. What about? Well, I'll tell you when we get there. Say, listen, if you... You better to... do what he says, Nora. Marco had an agreement to deliver the bonds, and I want them. The fact that he's dead doesn't alter the situation. Am I right, Sawyer? I've told my company that the thieves have contacted Simmons and are willing to return the bonds for 50% of their face value. The company agreed, and no questions asked. Come on, Nora, where are they? What if I don't know? It would be too bad to find that out afterwards. What's in it for me? Now you're getting smart. Sure she is. She knows she can't cash bonds in the East River. Don't worry, Nora, you'll be taken care of. Hmm. But I'm going to be taken care of my way. I'm entitled to Marco's cut, so I want an equal share in the profits. Oh, no, that's too steep. Not if I have all the bonds, it isn't. It's okay with me. All right, it's a deal. Just a minute. Where are you going? To get the stuff. And then take a part of <laughs> I don't think so. You tell me where they are, I'll get them. We'll let Red run this little errand. He won't know what he's after, so we'll come back. Hey, Red! Nora wants you to do something for her. Sure. Tell him what you want, Nora. I want you to go to my apartment and get a package for me. Pull up there and wait for me. Hey, park up there. Go on. Looking for something, Red? Yeah. No! What are you doing here? Never mind. What's this? I don't know. Well, I hope you don't, because if it's what I think it is, you'll get ten years. Barney! So help me! All I know is that Nora told me to come here and get a package. She don't say what's in it or... Where is she? I don't know as I want to tell you. It might make Happy sore. So what? So what? I ain't hankering to take the kind of slugs that Happy plants in the gut. You mean like he planted in the bond detective? Yeah. Gee, thanks, Red. You're a great help. Huh? Oh, wait a minute, Bonnie. I don't know a thing. Honest. I just heard him and Mark are talking, and even that don't mean a thing. I'm as crazy as a bat sometimes. I get a buzz into my head and I imagine things that never happened at all. <laughs> oh, take it easy. I won't squawk on you if you play ball with me. Looks like I got to, but what'll I tell Happy? Well, you don't tell him anything. You're going to take those bonds over there as if nothing happened. You didn't even see me, understand? No, but orders is orders. <laughs> Bonnie... You remember the game we was playing last night? There's something in this room. Hmm? Oh, hello, Sergeant. What brings you here? I've been tailing you since you left the cafe last night. What do you got here? Stay where you are. Stay where you are, Red. Get me police headquarters. Inspector Collins. And get it quick. Hello, Jeff. White speaking. I got a big surprise for you. Barney Callahan just unlocked a cell door for himself. Yeah, I got him in apartment 416 at the Sherwood Arms. Caught him with a nice batch of hot buns. <laughs> Don't worry. He'll be waiting here for you. That sure was a sucker move. 
What? Calling Collins. You have a chance of breaking the biggest case in years, yet you fix it to let him take the credit. <laughs> no wonder you're just a sergeant. I don't like that crack. Well, I don't like Collins pulling a fast woman. I found out all the answers. Answers to what? Five bond robberies and two murders. Steve Martins and Marcos. You know who pulled him? Hey, do you know shorthand? Yeah. Why? All right. I'm going to give you the whole setup. Here, sit down. And when Collins walks in, you'll be the hero. <laughs> Come on, Red. I'll <laughs> get hurt with you for this. Wait till I see Collins. Come back here. Let me out of this thing. He's had time enough. Where the devil is he? Maybe he stopped to take a bath. You don't suppose he'd think of double crossing it? No, you? not Red. He don't think. Remember, I want you to go in there as if nothing had happened. And for your own good, you better do it right. That you, Red? Yeah. What took you so long? I had a hard time figuring out where the back of the cabinet was. You would. Is this what you wanted? Give it here. Okay, you can go now. Thanks. Hold it. Stay just as sweet as you are. What are you trying to pull? Grab it, Snapper. I got it, buns and all. All right, beat it. Right. Nice work, Mr. Sawyer. All we have to do now is wait for the cops. I told you these guys were a bunch of suckers. What is this, a frame-up? Shut up, Happy. Sure, it's a frame-up, and you're it. You knocked off Steve Martin and Marco because Simmons here made a fall guy out of you. He let you think you could handle Marco's end of the bond racket, and it would mean one less cut in on the door. Keep your mouth shut, Happy. Yeah, keep your mouth shut and see who takes the rap. It won't be Simmons because he was just a go-between. And it won't be Marco because he's already taken his last ride. And it won't be Mr. Sawyer because he was merely acting for his company. Oh, he was, eh? Well, he's the guy that tipped us off when the bond messengers were going to make a delivery to the bank. He wanted to see Martin bumped off because Martin was wise to him. You double-crossing. Go on, tell him what it is. So I'm going to take the rap, am I? Get on your feet, newsboy, and I'll give you a story. But you won't be alive to print it. Sure, I knocked off Martin. I got Marco, too. And I ain't finished yet. Use your head, Happy. I'll use this. Get back there, Simon. Sure glad you had that little toy with you, sister. Wait again, Jeff, huh? Well, what's the answer to this one? Oh, we just gave Happy a little send-off. He went to see a man about a hearse. At least I don't see any gray hair. We can thank Bonnie Callahan for that. Come on, let's get out of this birdcage. Bonnie! How can I ever thank you? Why? Judy! <laughs> well... <laughs> Mel, this is Barney. And I owe him everything. And I owe you an apology. And you owe me a picture. Thanks. I thought you were trying to steal my girl. <laughs> <laughs> If you're ever in Johnstown, be sure and look us up. Johnstown? You might be there sometime, Bonnie, and it would be such fun seeing you. You're going back there? Yes, we decided this town's too big for us. But we'll never forget you. Never. Well, well good luck. Goodbye, Bonnie. For that album of yours. For a drink. Thanks. A Johnstown jolt. <laughs> <laughs> a, jo a Johnstown jolt. <laughs> <laughs>